this video we're going to look at the different theories of evolution and we're going to look at Lamarckism, Darwinism and then punctuated equilibrium. So the first one that we are looking at is Lamarckism. Jean-Baptiste Lamarck. So he lived from 1744 up until 1829 and Lamarck formulated two laws. So the law of use and disuse and then the law of inheritance of acquired characteristics. So let's look at these two laws. So the law of use and disuse, what does it say? It says changes in the environment create new needs that cause organisms to modify their existing organs to meet the need. Repeated use of the organ would cause it to enlarge and become more efficient, while disuse of an organ would cause it to degenerate. Now don't laugh at Lamarck yet because he was very forward thinking at his time of living. Nobody else had made any of these theories. There was very little science available. So he was um, really a pioneer with his thoughts. And then the inheritance of acquired characteristics, the modification an organism acquired during its lifetime could then be passed on to its offspring. Now Lamarck used giraffes to explain his theory and this is quite funny because Lamarck had never seen giraffes in the wild. In fact by the time that he could actually see a giraffe he had gone blind. So yes it's quite strange that he used giraffes as an explanation. So what Lamarck said was that all giraffes had short necks originally. So they all looked like this. Now giraffes frequently stretched and used their necks to reach the leaves of tall trees. They needed the food. So the necks then became longer with this frequent stretching. And they were then able to reach the leaves of these trees. Now the long necks acquired in this way could then be passed on to the next generation or were then inherited. Now we know this is not true today if we use a general silly explanation if you are a bodybuilder for example and you've worked on these massive biceps and triceps and you you look like Arnold Schwarzenegger and you've got abs for days your children are not going to be born with abs and biceps for days that's not how it works only genetics is passed on so let's look at why Lamarck's theories have been rejected and you can use these as explanations of that so acquired characteristics are not inherited they do not cause any change to the DNA of an organism's gametes so the sperm and the ova that fuse to form a new organism they are not changed by these acquired characteristics organisms did not evolve because they want to survive. So Lamarck basically said that giraffes wanted to survive and they wanted to get food. They had an internal drive to change. So he believed in determinism and that is not true. So giraffes possessed the gene for long strong necks and did not acquire the gene by stretching their necks. So this is what actually happened. Moving on to Darwinism, father of evolution. Once again, your exam guidelines have got a very good explanation of Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection that you can study just like that, but we'll get to that in a second. So Darwinism, Charles Darwin formulated uh, the theory of evolution by natural selection, and he lived from 1809 up until 1882. So Darwin was born by the time or had been alive for quite a while by the time that Lamarck had passed away so he had access to Lamarck's theories so Darwin went on a voyage with the HMS Beagle and they they sailed quite far and wide and some of the most important observations that Darwin made was at the Galapagos Islands which we'll actually look at in more detail in some later videos but uh, Darwin actually looked at quite a lot of animals and plant species and this actually helped him to make and compile quite a lot of notes that he then used in his book The Origin of Species by Natural Selection which uh, was widely
criticized and accepted and yeah it, it led to quite a few scientific theories being formulated so his theory was based on four observations survival of a population is ensured by producing more offspring than is needed there has to be variation in a population some individuals are better adapted and more likely to reproduce and weaker ones will die off characteristics transferred from parents to offspring so let's look at Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection so once again you can use this little recipe in your exam guidelines if you need to answer questions you can then just change um, or use organism names if they you ask you to give a specific example so organisms produce a large number of offspring and there is a great deal of variation amongst these offspring so this word variation is very important because some have favorable characteristics and some do not when there is a change in the environment uh, or the environmental conditions or if there is competition so these environmental conditions are also known as selection pressures and that is for example if there's enough food water shelter or mates or if there's diseases or predators in the areas that is all environmental conditions that could influence an organism but we'll look at that um, a bit later in the video so when these environmental pressures or selection pressures arise the organisms with characteristics which make them more suited so favorable conditions they survive whilst organisms with unfavorable characteristics which make them less suited will die the organisms that survive are able to reproduce and they pass on the allele very important allele because this is genetics it's not you having some acquired characteristic and then passing it on so they pass this on to the offspring and then the next generation will therefore have a higher proportion of individuals with this favorable characteristic and in this way the population gradually changes over a longer period of time and this can actually lead to the formation of a new species uh, this is also known as speciation okay so see there's a there's a, a spelling error there it's believed not beloved so how Darwin believed his theory applied to giraffes uh, so as a result of genetic variation in the giraffes so there was variation some had long necks some had medium necks and then the others had short necks so some giraffes had longer necks than others the environmental change or competition for resources in this case it was the leaves of trees that were a bit higher uh, causing those with shorter necks to die because they could not get food and those with the longer necks survived and they thrived and they were able to pass on the genes or the genotype for these longer necks to their offspring and that is why we have populations of giraffe with long necks so that is Darwinism in a nutshell then looking at punctuated equilibrium uh, this was put forth by Niles Eldridge and Stephen J. Gould and this was done in 1972 so it's a fairly recent theory of evolution so this explains the speed at which evolution takes place because there are long periods of time where species do not change or they change gradually through natural selection so we call this equilibrium and then this alternates um, with or is punctuated by short periods of time where there is a rapid change that occurs through natural selection during which new species may form in a short period so this tells us why there's a long period in the fossil record when nothing changed until there is a sudden or rapid change that is interrupted or punctuated um, these organisms existence so some weren't able to adapt and they became extinct and then there were others that were able to adapt by experiencing favorable mutations and then this led to speciation so the formation of new species now this can also be shown on the graphs below so Darwinism used gradualism so there was a gradual change 
in the species over time. Whereas with punctuated equilibrium, you had these punctuated periods where there had to be a rapid change. So this is a linear graph, and then you can see as compared to the punctuated equilibrium graph, which is quite different. Next, we'll look at artificial selection of domesticated animal species and then a crop species. But before we can understand artificial selection, we do need to understand natural selection first. So in natural selection, nature selects the fittest individuals for survival. Individuals with favorable characteristics will survive and pass on their genes. And then individuals with unfavorable characteris characteristics will die out. So this is very similar to Darwin's theory of evolution. Looking at this diagram at the bottom, so we've got a hawk and then we've got a population of mice. And there's variation in this population because we've got dark furred mice and then white furred mice. So looking at the environment that these mice live in, it's a very dark environment. So obviously there's going to be a selection pressure here with a predator. Now this hawk is obviously going to see the white mice first because the black mice are well camouflaged by the environment, which means that more white mice are going to be caught and they are going to be less likely to pass on their characteristics to their offspring. So more black furred mice survive and they pass on this favorable characteristic uh, to their offspring. Now looking at these points on the right hand side, beneficial traits help an organism survive, but it might be harmful in another environment if the organism has these traits. So in a different environment, let's say in the desert, these black mice would be the ones that were being, uh, would be eaten because the white mice would then be very well camouflaged with the sand and the black mice would stand out, which means that the white mice in that situation would be able to pass on their specific traits. Now there has to be existing variation between the organisms, so in a population you'll have great variation in order for natural selection to occur. Now the selection pressures that I was talking about earlier, competition such as food, water, space and mates, there's predators, changes in temperature, diseases and then limited light, so this is more uh, applicable to plants. Artificial selection, so this is the deliberate breeding of plants and animals for desired characteristics. Now these characteristics won't benefit the survival of the offspring. It's not necessarily beneficial. In fact, there can be multiple complications that arise because of these characteristics that us as humans have selected and have found, have found desirable. Now examples of these desirable tra traits in, in animals is for example cows that produce a lot of milk, sheep that produce a lot of wool, horses for speed, and then cattle for beef, so lots of meat production. Now this is a Belgian blue bull specifically and you can see that this animal is extremely muscular which means there's a lot of meat, a lot of muscle on here. So this was specifically bred for meat production and I can promise you these Belgian blues did not look like this a few years ago. Then the differences between natural and artificial selection, this table I got from the answer series, uh, part two specifically, it just summarizes it very nicely. So if you want some extra information or some additional activities that you can practice, I do recommend getting those books, uh, part one and part two for life sciences. They are very helpful. So natural selection, the environment is the selection pressure, with it, whereas artificial selection, it is humans. Um, it, natural selection, the biodiversity increases and the variation, whereas artificial selection, it decreases. Um, natural selection is a very slow process, whereas artificial selection is a very rapid process. Natural selection benefits the animal uh, or the organism, whereas artificial selection doesn't necessarily do that because it is traits that humans find desirable. Now we also get artificial selection in crops, 
specifically for uh, fewer seeds. I'm talking about seedless grapes, seedless oranges. So it's, it's not a hassle for us so that we have to remove the seeds and so on when we are eating these fruits, as an example. Larger fruit, faster ripening, resistance to pests and drought, and then larger yields. So looking at cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, and kale as an example, they all came from one specific plant, the wild mustard plant. And then us humans specifically selected certain characteristics that we wanted out of these plants, and which brought us to these variations that we have today. Corn, as another example, didn't always look like this. It looked like that, it looked like a grass, and it was actually a lot of researchers could not uh, link these two for very long because they looked so different. And then lastly, another example is dog breeds, the dog pre breeds that we have today. So all dogs be belong to the same species, Canis lupus familiaris, and they all share one common ancestor, which is the gray wolf, Canis lupus. And all of the dog breeds that we have today came from the gray wolf. It's with human, um, inter uh, well, selecting and breeding certain dogs with each other to get those desirable traits that we wanted. An example of this is the pug, very cute little dog, but they weren't always like this. A pug actually was a bit taller and had a longer snout. It was with artificial selection that we got to the, the dog that we have today, which is actually not good for it because, because of that smaller snout, they actually have quite a lot of respirat uh, sort of breathing is issues, excuse me, and then a lot of complications with their eyes as well. And that is the end of evolution, the second part of evolution.